you remember how we met? Yes, uh, 1994, but not physically. <laughs> I was asking you guys if you are up for doing a remix for the Beauty and the Beast. And I was happy when I received your answer with a yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> and I was so happy about the remix. This was 1994. Yeah. 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 Well, what, one of the things that I, I do remember, and, I, and I, turned the, I know I've turned this memory into poetry, but this is my memory. And that was, we were at the sound shaft when Skyscraper, when Skyscraper was out. And uh, you played it, and you were in the DJ booth. I remember someone saying, oh, that's Sven. I went, oh, that's Sven. I can, I can even see in my mind's eye what you were wearing. And you were in that, that booth behind glass <clears throat> that was in the sound shaft at the back of heaven. And, um, and Rick had created a club mix of, for, uh, for Skyscraper, which hadn't got so much vocals on it, and it didn't do all the things that the album track did. And you dropped the full track that wasn't the club track and uh, and the dance floor filled up and I remember just looking at Rick and thinking oh well there, there was a in my head I imagined it was going to take us years to, to for people to accept us as a band but through the remixes and th that there would be an acceptance of the of the club but in that one movement you kind of got rid of all of that and we just made this jump. It was like, okay, well, Sven thinks we're cool. <laughs> we're cool. Okay. <laughs> That's my poetry. Uh, I'm getting okay. sick into uh, it. Nice well, it was. It was good. Was, uh, there's a lot of truth in that. A lot of truth. It meant a lot at the time. It really, it really did. meant a lot. Yeah. And you championed us a lot. You would play the records when we were, we were kind of outsiders. We were this this band, and to a, to a lot of people in clubs, not cool, but you play their records. So it was, oh, oh, okay, that's kind of confusing. Sven plays their records, so they must be cool, but they're a band. Okay, that's a bit of a car crash. And you kept doing it, and you kept doing it. And, and even times when we, we dipped, you still played our music. Um, of course. I mean, in my, 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 my first club, The Omen, which I was running from 1988 uh, until 1998, and we had Res. Res was our okay. our morning yeah. morning hymn. I mean, that yeah, was yeah. I played it. I don't know for how many years, uh -huh. uh, uh, dark and long, wow. uh, born sleepy, and and so on. You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. this was they were the Omen classics. To be honest, <laughs> you know, yeah. not a night without one. Well, <laughs> well, yeah. well thank you. No, really, no, thank you, thank you, really. And then when we played together again, I think the, la the last time we played together was in Ibiza, uh, was it last, last year? Last year, yeah. Last, last year, year at yeah. 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 And the set you played then, I mean, you very graciously came over and played with us and, and played before, and, and it was fantastic. Again, just seeing... That was a really small venue, no? yeah. 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 so it's a, it's a different yeah. feeling yeah. Yeah. with yeah. our sound. It yeah. was, yeah. 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 But the sound that you made, and just, just listening to you play these really long, tracks again it was like oh yeah this feels right that's what i do yeah. it feels right um, yeah with vinyl yeah, and it it felt like the place that our music was rooted in the way i haven't playing. changed <laughs> the music is always new up to date but the way i play i play the vinyl yeah i am uh, go vinyl shopping yeah, yeah, yeah how yeah. do you move that around i mean everyone's got a usb stick now yeah how do you you still got b boxes. Yeah, you? yeah. My 60 kilos. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> My workout. <laughs> no, I, but I love it. You know, it's, I could not imagine. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. The feeling, the connection. The smell, everything. Well, you look very well on it. You, lo you look <laughs> a lot better than some who've been doing it less. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you must look after yourself and take care of health and so that you can enjoy a 12-hour show. Yeah, that's of course important. You know. That is that, isn't it? Yeah. The, the miles we travel, Yeah. the jet lags, yeah. <laughs> and then on point, on stage. Yeah. yeah. For me, it's easier now, because I don't do some of the things I used to do. And uh, so it doesn't take so much out of the body, you know? Um, and I think 
uh, there's a part, well, I think our relationship is, is infinitely better than it ever was. So that the traveling, the being together in hotels, the, we, we work yeah. together a lot, you know, we write yeah. in hotels. We, <coughs> we, I, I, th I think it freaks people out in the crew at first because we're always together everywhere you know they'll see us in <laughs> the town couple. they'll see us they'll say, what are they doing together they never used to be together and so that the experience of being together is something that i look forward to and going away is is um is a pleasure and uh, weirdly i think physically physically it's not so um i look back at those the old films, and I just think this, this guy is just out of control. He's just running around all over the place. And I think it was, it was at some time seeing the Buena Vista Social Club and watching these guys in their 80s, but the way they moved, and it was just like, oh. <laughs> so you need more of that. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. You look good. You well, look if good. you'd looked over at the stage, you'd have seen me kind of. Well, that's smoothly working. What people that, tell uh, me, I just never noticed. <laughs> Maybe not. But you also like uh, a live show. It's also like two hours. Yeah. yeah. Two hours and yeah. a half. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Can be. Mm. Huh? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. this is. Yeah. After well, adrenaline. It's int it, it is. It is. That sometimes when you go on at three o'clock in the morning, and as you're walking up the steps, and the body is going, no. I'm mm. not going to do this. Oh. And the mind is going, and I'm not going to tell it to do this. <laughs> and then Rick drops the kick drum. And it's as simple as that. Yeah. And then at the end of the show, you're thinking, is that it? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> you know, we can, yeah. we, can go, we can go longer yeah. than that. Yeah, the kick on. drum is really, it's like, yeah. it works yeah. also for me. But yeah. sometimes, yeah. You, you know, you wake up in a hotel before a gig and you go, okay, now. Well, I hope I can, you know, yeah. I yeah. can and do then it. it starts. And then with the first kick and you get into it and the rest goes almost automatically. Yeah. Do you change up your set still? Do you, do you have a, do you just make it up, respond as you go? I have, everything is in, in my technical, you know, contract. I go with the clubs on the festivals. A setup is always yeah. Perfect, which just depends on the stage, you know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, sometimes we have to put uh, the special yeah, stop the vibrations. Exactly, yeah. but yeah. in general, I have no problems. Yeah. Yeah. No. And your set, when you play your set, is are you improvising that? Always, yeah. Okay. I mean, of course, it depends. You know, if you, when you play ninety minutes, which, which is very rare for me, but three hours, four hours, five hours. After six hours, the fun starts. <laughs> you know, because and then you don't think about it anymore. You know, you yeah, just play. Yeah, yeah, After yeah, 12 yeah, hours, yeah, it's yeah. getting really interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, What's the longest you've played? You're being really serious, aren't you? When was the last time you played 12 hours? It's probably oh, last week, was uh, it? I played uh, 11 hours in Tokyo not so long ago. Uh, and, and at uh, Ibiza, I played long sets. Yeah. That must be tiring as well. Physically tiring, no? Ah. I'm no, I love it. Just the music. I, I'm not doing it so often anymore. No, no, sure. Not like every weekend. Uh, and maybe six to eight shows a year, where I, you know I pick them: opening, closing, wow. Tokyo, Time Warp. Wow. You know, a special cocoon. Yeah, and I just it's 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 where the fun starts when yeah. you, we don't think okay you know um, what can I do now in, in in 90 minutes or in two hours or in three hours oh, you know you have a little bit you have an idea I have never realized that I never it's never stopped to think that this was an aspect you know that you yourself would get to that point you know but I could I can really relate yeah, it depends who, you know in, in which situation if you are playing in a club or if you're on the festival stage who plays before you uh -huh. you know what kind of vibe uh -huh. is out there uh -huh. Uh -huh. you know they like it straight, you know, banging from the beginning, or is there some, you know, space left to create a bridge, uh, yeah. tell a story? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It would be it would be great to try and do something like that with you, you know, to kind of like take on from what we did at Cocoon with you. Yes. You know, in 2009 was it at the club? Yes. But something that was 10 hours, 12 hours. Yeah, imagine. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Just. 
You guys, you remember at the time, the first time when you came to Ibiza? Yours, yours was probably way before ours. They, yeah. They just invented the island. <laughs> you well, probably looks, started well, looks it. Well, looks so old. <laughs> <laughs> 1980 was my first. 1980? Yeah, I, I read yeah. as a young, very young guy. I was 16. You went to Ibiza. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What, yeah. was, what was to, to do? What, vacation or? I escaped from home, hitchhiked to Barcelona, flipped the coin, Ibiza, mm. let's go. I stayed three months. <laughs> what did you do? I was sleeping in the, in the, in the forest. Yeah. I stole a sun chair. Yeah. <laughs> stole a chair. <laughs> Made my little home there. Yeah. Uh, and, uh. and then I discovered the nightlife. And I was giving away flyers, I was working for the clubs, tried to smuggle myself into the clubs because I was quite young. No? Yeah. Well, I made it. Yeah. Is that where your passion for DJing started? Yes. That was, especially in Amnesia, and DJ Alfredo was playing in that time. Oh my God, that was magic. Yeah. It was an open air club with a beautiful glass mirror pyramid in the fountain and yeah we had some proper opening rituals there yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well, <laughs> really well. you know, on the dance floor with duran duran and grace jones and, yeah. and hippies yeah all freaks, mixed up. music lovers and little sven in between <laughs> wow. Wow. and where are they now yeah, where are they now? I'm still there. <laughs> yeah, you're still there, yeah. 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 There. And so what, did you then go back and decide yeah. that that's what you wanted to do? I can, um, no, well, then I went back then to Germany and then my mother was asking me what happened. <laughs> and I had to explain her a little bit. Uh, and then she was asking me to become a DJ. My parents were running a little club at that time. Wow. So actually it was my mum. Wow. She said, now, Sven, it's time for you. My father, uh, no. <laughs> and then, yeah, then every year I brought all my friends to Ibiza. He yeah. said, listen, this island, this is just Come free spirit. Look. And, yeah, yeah. and uh, you know, could s smoke everywhere, yeah, yeah, easy. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Met so many nice people there. It yeah. was amazing, yeah. especially the 80s. Really? Yeah. yeah. There was no acid house and there was no techno no. and there was no house. There was Italo disco yeah. in the beginning of the 80s. Mm -hmm. Psychedelic rock, mm -hmm. African percussion mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was very trippy. Trippy and trancey, real long. Very eclectic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So did that have an effect yeah. on your music then? Probably. Your choice of music? <laughs> it's probably. Yeah. 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 I was always, I tried to bring this feeling back home to Frankfurt. I was telling my friends about, you know, what I felt there and then, and then this balaric sound was created by some of the DJs. And then I started with my uh, very first production. I produced it in the studio with Michael Münzing and Luca Ancelotti. Yeah, yeah. Electrica Salsa. Uh -huh, uh -huh. dedicated to Ibiza uh -huh. Uh -huh. and it became a massive hit in Ibiza uh -huh. and this was then 85, 86, the rest is history. So not long after you'd first been there as, and sleeping in the woods, <laughs> yeah. you went back as a... Imagine, yeah. in, at that time, not having all this uh, technology <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and, and uh, but we were just, we were in Frankfurt, we were a group of DJs, we really wanted to change something. You know. We just had the feeling, that just the, the inner call. Mm. Um, was there a scene in mm. Frankfurt? Yes, at that there time? was a good scene in Frankfurt. Yeah. There, there was, was a techno club already in 1981. Wow. But playing more industrial. Mm. And yeah, of course, Kraftwerk were giving us the huge kick mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. at that time. So, and again, now I. Uh, Payback. Inviting them, coming, and yeah. this yeah. is uh, yeah. nice, you so know. Thank you. Uh, yeah. That's a nice, nice circle. Shape. Yeah, a nice that's circle. A nice, that's it a really is. Nice it circle. is. Yeah. Which, I mean, we've, we've, we've been part of an era when I think people, younger people, look back and say, it must have been amazing. 
to have been around these illegal raves and warehouse parties. Love and Parade. Love Parade. I mean, in Ibiza when it was beginning and, and, uh, and, that, and that's true. And, but then at that time, I remember thinking back to the, the end of the 60s and thinking, well, people then probably thought that was never going to happen again either. And, and I know there were, and particularly Ibiza was, did link to that time, didn't it? Yeah. And, uh, and there were people from that time who seemed to recognize that something was happening that they, they identified with. So I think um, the great thing about dance music is that it's about people coming together to have a good time, to celebrate, to not be violent. And so it's this multicultural mixing pot of, of people who can see that they can get on for a really long time. Yeah. And uh, there's something quite uh, important about that. Very important. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. It's funny, when I, when I grew up, I grew up in the, in the farmlands just outside Birmingham, and all my mates were into rock music. So dance music was considered to be inferior. And I, I, listened, I, I sort of grew up listening to Motown mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of that music. And, uh, but I was indoctrinated into the ways of, of, of rock, and it wasn't, it wasn't cool to be talking about dance music. So then when the 70s rolled on, disco was a dirty word. And, and, that, and that idea of people going to a club and dancing was considered to be um, not serious. Uncool. Uncool. Mm. Rock music was serious, mm. but dance music was not serious. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it was frivolous. And then when, I think when, when, certainly when encountering the first raves that we went to, I just thought, this is the best rock gig I've ever been to in my life. <laughs> You know, and no one's beating anybody up and there's these amazing things that are happening, light shows. And it was like, this must be what Pink Floyd is like. I, I don't know, but it just seemed to be, it seemed to be uh, like a, a, a real thing to, to be happy, to, to have a good time was a real thing. It wasn't a, it wasn't a throwaway thing, mm. you know? It wasn't something to be looked down on. It's also, a, you know, we learned this is, is also a spiritual experience. The energy, yeah. you know, rave together yeah. for hours. Yeah. That creates such a, such a nice energy. You know, it's that something like you get... Joining it, people. You want to have it and every weekend. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. something is, you get addicted to it, to the beats. Back to the kick drum. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Bam. Yeah. yeah. We say this thing that in the 90s, when it was more improvised, the show, Rick would start it. And then it was basically you were looking at the audience going, if something doesn't come back, we've got, we've got nothing. You know, got another five minutes maybe, but we can't fake it. And, uh, and although we don't improvise in that way that we used to, it still feels the same that, okay, this is for you. If you don't have anything to give back, we can't stand up here just jumping around, yeah, making yeah. some, mm -hmm. you know, stock shapes mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. singing some songs. Mm -hmm. And so that exchange, you're absolutely right, is really important. Right, guys, we're good. We're wrapped. So thank you.